Uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse uh, 12 through 15. This is talking about Lucifer here, who would... Satan, Lucifer, it says, How you are, all, are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken nations. Notice what he says here in verse 13. It says, You said in your heart... I will ascend into heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mountain of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I'll ascend above the heights of the clouds. I'll be like the most high. Lucifer's imagination is what got him in trouble. These these thoughts, these ideas, these these imaginations of I'm going to ascend up above and I'm going to kick God off and I'm going to take his spot. These thoughts... These imaginations, this is what ultimately got him in trouble and got him kicked out, kicked out of, of heaven. He understood some things here. And this is why you see him doing this to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Lucifer, now Satan, understood there's power in the imagination. There's power with, with our, our thought life, our soul here. And so he goes to Eve in Genesis chapter 3. And... In verse 4 it says, The serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Notice what Satan was doing with Eve is that he had no authority over her. Right? He has no authority over her. Adam and Eve, I mean, they're right. They're righteous. They're one with God. They're perfect, complete, holy. Satan has absolutely no authority over them. I want you to get this piece because we're going to hammer this up. He has no authority over them at this point. So he has to be a tempter. He has to be a deceiver. He has to come and bring thoughts and ideas and suggestions. And he tells her, if you'll do this, You'll become like God. Now, it was the great deception. It was the great deception because Adam and Eve were already made in the image of likeness of God. She already was. Right? The thing that she, she thought she needed, she actually already had. And Satan said, if you'll do this, you'll get it. And the Bible says, and I think sometimes we, we, we've glossed over it so many times, but the Bible says, when she saw that that fruit was good for food and it would make her like God. When she saw, well, we're not talking about her physical eye. She'd been looking at it. But something happened here. There was a change of perspective. There, were, there was a change of, of seeing here. Something changed. And it wasn't just because there was a glance. No, she's looking at this thing and she's hearing the thoughts, the idea, the suggestion, the deception, the temptation. And hearing that long enough and looking at that long enough, all of a sudden there was a shift. And she saw that it was good. Now before she knew it was bad, it was wrong, she ain't supposed to touch that. But she listened to that long enough and while looking at it long enough, and all of a sudden she saw differently. And that imagination produced a manifestation of I'm going to do this. Now you know very well that your actions are a product of your thoughts. 